We've been highlighting companies that have come in the Web3 space and done well. Well, one just got yanked. Sharing some very tough personal news. Starbucks has decided to sunset Odyssey. There's a ton of uncertainty about my future now because I just lost my full-time job, but I'm doing my best to look at positives. I'm incredibly grateful for Starbucks and the opportunity they provided me in the last 50 months. I had the chance to work with one of my favorite bands on the planet. I learned from the best and the highest minds uh, in customer loyalty and throughout my role as community lead for the beta program. I was allowed to be myself every step of the way. Uh, so to be honest, way I just saw this, I didn't read it all because it was going to do it here, but I thought it was going to go uh, in a little bit more uh, insights for what exactly happened. But damn, Starbucks Odyssey. Uh, let me see if I can just Starbucks Odyssey. I'm pretty sure Boomer is actually a part of that. So let me, uh, I'll just call him up right now. Maybe I'll ask him his opinions on that before we get into the Jolly Beans and stuff because that is... That is a heck of a happening, to be honest. Uh, I'm just saying, join the wait list. Yeah, I'm not able to check out the site, but this is this is kind of what it looks like right now. Um, GM, GM. Yo, what's up? I gotta I gotta change your audio. You were a bit too high. Uh, did you see the news about Starbucks Odyssey? Yeah, I didn't. Um, I didn't have uh, pissing off like some of their biggest fans and rugging for uh, on my bingo card for 2024. <laughs> <laughs> so like give us the lowdown because i know that you had a card for it so what did starbucks odyssey offer was it something that you expected to go on forever what's the what's the thoughts yeah i literally ha i got my um merch thing from last quarter and i still haven't even opened the box but like i just got it i'm like i'm pretty surprised that they canned it i wonder if the team knew a little bit ahead but yeah that uh it was a great program so i i joined Oh man, like when it first started, I got into the alpha or beta or whatever they called it. And you would essentially complete little quests and uh, you could buy their their stamps, their NFTs, their NFT gateway. It was kind of all done through their site and it was really well done. I think the team did a, a great job. That's why I bought a bunch. And then um, the points were basically accumulated if you completed quests or, or owned NFTs. And then you got rewards every quarter. And the first quarter was like free coffee for a month, which was amazing. I wish they had kept that one. Um, but they, they range from all sorts of stuff. So I got like merch, disc, uh, a gift card. Um, I think we got coffee for a year. I'm wondering if that's going to still come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 that's it, tough that's it was tough. Good coffee man like yeah uh yeah i just i just went to the mailbox and picked up the box and i'm i'm like 99 percent sure it's the coffee but maybe it's an empty box and the the mog uh finger pointing at me that is wild well for everybody that's tuned in here appreciate you we're almost halfway through the day wanted to bring on boomer as we've said in the video if you saw the promo that we just played founder of jolly beans game founder 793 capital serial entrepreneur with three successful exits and punk 793 when did you decide to get a punk and why uh oh man i've had the punk for probably close to two years now um if not really close to two years and kind of in the depths of the of the bear uh when eth was like a thousand bucks um it was kind of like a no-brainer to me that the apex asset was trading at i think a, a very discounted rate even though it was quite a bit of eth still like eth dollar wise was low and when prez put this up for sale like a dm him and was like yo can i can i make an offer on this and and we ended up doing a deal it's it's probably one of my favorite punks in the whole collection and i was pretty shocked i got it i had to pay well over floor but um to me i think it was it was worth it and so i'm building a little brand around it and just having fun it's interesting seeing because i've been messing around changing my profile back and forth between but then i saw your name on one of like the uh i guess like angel investors or whatever uh on something and i was like oh okay listen we're, we're, we have to be paying attention to what we're making as a pfp because people are going to be seeing that and giving that first impression but speaking of impressions here was when you bought that before <laughs> yuga labs got involved or was it after and i'm just kind of asking because i'm curious your take after you acquired if you felt more bullish less bullish etc uh, it was before. 
And um, yeah, it's it's funny you mentioned the PFP thing. Like I've I've done several SAFs uh, recently, but I'm I'm never big enough to like make it by name. So I'm always the like among others or and many more. <laughs> Uh, so I keep making <laughs> tweets, uh, kind of messing around with it. Cause I don't write like huge, huge checks, right? Like I'm not a, a VC, but, um, yeah, so it's, it's funny. I get to see it everywhere and it's, it's fun, but, uh, never by name. Um, I bought the punk, uh, before Yuga. I am indifferent if Yuga owns them or not. Uh, to be honest, I think Yuga, and I know you, you, you had fell on, um, he did a fantastic job. Um, I have a feeling they've got some cash flow stuff happening and I bet you we see the punks released from, uh, their, their treasury, probably this bull run so they can raise more capital. Spicy. Spicy. So what we have boomer on here for is to talk about the venture of jolly bean games. So give us a load down however you want to start, uh, jolly bean games. What is it? Yeah, um, so it's been it's been fun. Um, we've been going a couple months, pretty stealth. Um, somehow it got picked up with some of the uh, community that that whether they follow me or or others, and um, it, it's kind of funny. We we somehow have a thousand followers, and we haven't posted very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, which you got to love the degen mentality uh, uh, around that, and I appreciate you know everyone wanting to support. Uh, we're gonna start being more public. Um, we're testing things. We're having a good time. Uh, we've got a couple games kind of underway. Uh, one of our, our big games, we're working with, uh, another IP, um, in the space that will be released, I believe at the end of the month here, um, uh, in terms of like who that is and what we're doing and how it's powered. Uh, but in May that game will hit, uh, Apple and Google and, uh, you know, be ready for, for its initial testing and kind of seeing product market fit. And, um, our second kind of piece that is going to happen real soon is our kind of trial with uh, Star Defenders, which is uh, really not about the game, but more kind of flexing the uh, ability to kind of think outside the box. And uh, I'm sure we can talk a little bit deeper on that, but it's it's actually going to be an ordinal uh, inscription, um, but a, a play in function that I don't believe is, has uh, been seen in the space yet. So we're we've been testing that, and I believe the team got you uh, the ability to kind of play test the game, even though it's not just about the game. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I'm just bringing it up right now on another screen. Give me two seconds. Yeah, and again, it's not about the game. It's more just the idea of thinking creatively and and having fun, and um, and then we're experimenting with some stuff on TikTok, uh, interactive gameplay. Um, that allows uh, a TikTok streamer to uh, essentially play an interactive game and, you know, someone watching them natively in TikTok, if you like, or uh, share it, uh, tip, then the enemies will take different actions. Maybe they have haste, maybe they more multiply, uh, and it's more of a, a Clash Royale feel uh, to that game, but that's a, a Web2 game, like, native within TikTok, and we've got some fun ways that we want to include Web3. Um, but again, just more thinking outside the box and testing um, and experimenting is is really what Jolly Bean's all about for right now. Awesome. It's cool that you're diving into the ordinal side of things. And so like more broadly, we've seen a huge uptick regarding ordinals. How do you think that that's going to kind of play for the rest of this market? And you kind of seeing the success that a lot of ordinals has had. Is that one of the reasons that you wanted to jump in there with one of its kind of first of the kind? Um, I think, so Ordinals feels like NFTs in 2021. It feels raw and new and fun. And honestly, like, it takes a while to transact on Bitcoin. Like, you make a purchase and, you know, 40 minutes later, it's in your wallet. Um, so we're not seeing the, the like, blur farming marketplace, uh, you know, churning, um, you know, things that we've seen with, with ETH. So naturally that is going to slow uh, sales, good or bad. Um, and, and recently it's been good, right? When someone can't buy something and immediately floor it uh, and move on and, and get their, you know, Bitcoin back in, in, you know, 30 seconds to go deploy it again. Um, so the infrastructure is different. The inf- and uh, 
I like the, the that piece. I like that it's new. I mean, I still don't know everything about it, but I want to be involved. I mean, I've owned Bitcoin for a very long time, and um, it's kind of funny as ETH was bleeding, Bitcoin was saving my bags. Um, so it's fun cheerleading on both sides of the camp. I know that's kind of boomerish, but um, I am a, a big fan of, of Bitcoin. And so we just want to make our mark there and have fun with it. So it's a way for us to test. Um, and Star Defenders is kind of the the game that's going to allow us to, um, you know, make this initial experiment and see if it works. LFG. And if it does, then we'll double, triple down and build some really cool stuff and more innovative games that will utilize um, the tech that we're building. Because it's, it's pretty unique. And to be honest, I, I haven't seen anyone um, building anything like this. Now, one thing that I want to do, because we're going to have Boomer here for a little bit. And so if you guys are wanting to check this out, it's at Jolly Bean Games. If you want to give him a follow, but Boomer is really involved with, I, I feel like everything. If I'm going to ask somebody who's involved with almost every single <laughs> ecosystem, I feel like you are kind of touching everything here. So I want to go back to Jolly Bean Games here before we wrap up. And I'm just curious your kind of sentiment of regarding the entire Web3 space right now, because we're seeing the blast happening. People are questioning what's going on with Polygon. We have entirely new chains that are popping up. Gal is now getting traction again after their price soared. Everybody's offering these DeFi protocols. We still have the same stigma around the entire space. Do you feel like we've actually evolved from where we were? And what are some of your favorite ecosystems right now? I mean, the the one that surprises me out of all of that is Gala. I mean, we 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 know you and I, but maybe you you know the viewers don't. But we have you know some Gala nodes that we've had since twenty twenty one, and they felt like they were dead, the entire bear. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, they've come alive. Gala's price come alive. The the owners turned off their nodes, and so the nodes increased uh, their their payouts. Um, that one's the like. That one's the wild card. I felt like Gala had extracted so much from the communities um, that it was going to be very hard to recover, and I was wrong. So um, I, it's funny you say, like, I'm in everything because I, I feel like I am trying to be in a lot of things. Um, I just made a post about how I need to kind of cut back NFT buying, uh, which, of course, then I still bought NFTs, um, <laughs> so I'm not taking my own advice. Uh, yeah, there's a, a really good video out today on, on Parallel, and I, I didn't own one of the avatars. So I wanted to uh, be able to participate in that because it looks pretty amazing. I read the white paper. So um, it's, it's, it's weird because right now it, I feel like there's so much happening that I, it's probably the least comfortable I have felt in years because there's so much action, so many things taking place, so many games launching, games that came out of nowhere. I know Derek's going to be on your show in a little bit. Um, he had a really killer idea and like, obviously I'll let him talk about his own stuff, but I, I played, I thought it was super novel, super interesting. And I love that people are experimenting and that was not on anyone's radar 60 days ago. So it's, uh, it's going to be a really fun year, I think. And I want to get more focused on kind of what we're building. Um, but there's always still time to, to DJ in and, and play around. It's, it's going to be hard to focus on what opportunity is there and it's very much an attention economy. So I'm, a. Uh... I'm I'm feeling underwater right now, Schiller. So <laughs> I'm things, feeling underwater. With so many things launching, and at the same time, I'm wanting to pull back to to focus more on delivering some cool stuff at Jolly Bean because um, we really do have some fun things in the works. Yeah, it's a it's a crazy time. Now you brought a parallel within there and yo, Jeremy, thank you so much for the 37 month subscription. Holy sheesh. But we're going to be having him down a little bit later to help us walk through some of the, uh, colony seven uh, months. You might paper. need to seek some help. Yeah, true. 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 And Becky, Bequito, what's up? Thanks for uh, popping by. I'm good. How are you? So the, I guess there's a couple things that we're going to be going over throughout this, but you were talking about the angel investing or just investing in general in the space right now. It feels like more people are trying to get into that opportunity. Well, at the same time, it felt that there wasn't really many people trying to do that over the last few months. I don't really know because I'm not in any of these circles. So maybe can you tell us about like the cycle of how investing within the Web3 space has looked over the past two, three-ish years? Yeah, so in 2021 and 2020, early 22, maybe half of 22, it was um, incredibly easy for anyone to raise money. Money was being thrown 
uh, around valuations were absolutely bonkers. Um, it, I kind of mark it as like pre other side drop and post other side drop, because that's where I feel like it really shifted. Um, the 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 community focus, the the founders and what they were building. So we had a lot of people, you know, that raised and were building through the bear, and many didn't make it. Um, and those those that did are now kind of resurfacing and showing, hey, this is what we've been building, and you know, we had enough, um, you know, firepower to kind of stick through the bear. No VCs were raising, or excuse me, were were writing checks really um, with any size from mid twenty two to like end of 23 and even early in 24 here um only certain vcs are, are actually writing checks uh and they're smaller checks than what were before even with bitcoin roaring and it feels like the last like 30 45 days have changed a bit um with with more projects seeking funding and and getting that funding um i kind of saw the market shifting in october that's when i started to buy heavily back into more coins and i saw more projects wanting to raise um i still think there's a lot of projects that are barely getting by that want to raise now um and it was a lot of smaller rounds down rounds or angel rounds where they didn't have huge checks but they had more people and hopefully more strategic people um but yeah the last probably 45 days um the amount of deal flow that's kind of come through is it's a hockey stick, honestly. Um, just the amount of people that are now starting to raise and we're seeing a lot of SAFs. So, you know, peer token, no equity um, with, with somewhat favorable unlock terms because the market is still in the, in the early bull. I think that'll change as we progress through the, the bull market. Um, so yeah, I've done a few because the unlocks and, you know, were favorable and the teams were, were amazing. I'm curious within like the, from a, a I guess we call us collectors uh, standpoint, we have certain things that end up not working out. Some things are straight up scams, et cetera. How does, how does it work from that side? If you're getting these investment rounds and whatnot, is it like a pretty limited chance that it's actually going to turn out horribly um, that they're like actually not going to do anything or is it much safer on that realm for anybody that's thinking about trying to deploy capital in that uh, area? It's absolutely not safer. Um, it is usually completely illiquid if you're on the safe side. So the, the, you know, you're going for equity. Um, you know, you're, you're basically betting on either they get acquired or they go public. That that's how the equity is going to, going to roll. Um, so if you think JPEGs are illiquid, uh, try holding equity in, in some of these companies, um, from the SAF side. So you're buying the token at an agreed upon price with some sort of vesting and cliff, um, you know, lock periods, whatever, um, those are more liquid and those have been really favorable with VCs, um, because as an LP, they don't take any of the risk on legally for the token in whatever jurisdiction, uh, the, the company is in, um, and they get, you know, liquidity within anywhere from, you know, at TGE, you know, upwards of maybe two, maybe three years. Um, and that probably is going to bring back their whole actual investment. And then they kind of are riding with the equity, uh, you know, for free. And that model has never really existed until tokens and crypto and all that that was starting in 21. That's why we saw such a big rush to deploy capital uh, early on, you know, in the in the in the bull. Plus, they had liquidity and ways to exit. Um, as as a community member in several projects, um, that was how we got dumped on, and uh, that won't change. That is that 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 is a very uh, real thing and that will happen again this bull run for sure and do you i had a thought and i totally lost it damn it uh yo he's a juicer uh four five Great six thought. eight it yeah amazing. that was a good thought um it was a banger question oh jurisdictions you brought up a point there regarding tokens and my mind immediately went to uh because i believe you're in the u.s so there's been all this kind of you know talk and trying to figure out from the legal landscape how things are going to roll out obviously brian armstrong brad garland house these guys are giving a big middle finger to the scc scc site went down yesterday all these things obviously election year and whatnot just curious your stance 
on how crypto legalization, I mean, obviously it's legal, that might not have been the, right, the correct term, but the barriers that are in the US right now, how do you see that that kind of uh, evolving negatively or positively over the uh, next year? Uh, we're losing, we're losing all the talent, we're losing funds, we're losing opportunity. Um, the US is massively screwing up to the point where I honestly think it's like a national security issue that they're screwing up so bad um, in terms of uh, crypto and how they're approaching a new financial market. Um, I'm going to be super thankful um, of Brian Armstrong, Coinbase, and anyone else that's out there fighting on behalf. They've got much bigger bags, much, much more connected. Um, you know, so I, I subscribe to Coinbase One, you know, it's what, 20 bucks a month or something. Um, I'm a shareholder, like I, I not a crazy amount, but like uh, just trying to support how I can. Um, because I'm thankful that they're out there fighting. Some people, you know, get mad and hate Coinbase for one reason or another, but um, they're the in at least in the US, they're one of the only ones that are really fighting for all of us. So, very thankful. I, um, I wish I could say more positively that I think it will change uh, on a quicker time scale. I don't think so. Um, everyone's kind of really pumped on this Bitcoin ETFs, which I mean, I knew would bring billions of liquidity. I didn't think it would bring as much liquidity in the first, you know, 60 days that it has. I kind of thought the amount of liquidity we have now would be a year target. So it's really nice seeing that. Um, I know a lot of the, from the advisory side, the professional money managers, um, they're not in it yet. And that's still trillions of dollars managed by them, um, mostly boomer wealth uh, that have not, you know, entered the space. So I still think we have a lot of wind at our backs, um, you know, to to help us and um, the Bitcoin price. I don't see an ETH ETF, um, you know, coming very quickly. I know people are saying, may maybe um but i think gensler is going to be pretty stubborn about it was sold as a security and it might not be a security now but it once was and i think we're gonna have to see him duke it out in court again so yeah i think the us is screwing up big time on this and i wish it wasn't the case have you thought about leaving the us at all being somebody super big in crypto or do you think that eventually it'll get figured out uh eventually it'll get figured out um, it won't be perfect and we'll, we'll probably screw up a lot along the way. Um, I mean, the government thinks that because USDC and USDT are, are, you know, backed by dollars that, that, you know, is going to anchor them and have strength in the dollar going forward. Um, I, I don't think that they understand that things like die exist and could grow in strength. Um, I can't and won't leave the U S between family and my wife's work and the kids. Uh, it's just not, not something for me. Um, <laughs> I've thought about it, but, uh, I'd be doing that, uh, single, uh, as I've been told. So <laughs> yeah, was, that is the a, conversation has started, but it ended quickly. <laughs> oh, it, 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 it started last bull run when I said, Hey, we actually kind of have a decent amount here and this could go a lot further if we didn't, you know, get hampered by all the, the unfun things like taxes and regulations. And, uh, I was quickly shot down with, you can do that. You will just be single. So I had somebody bring up to me the other day that apparently Coinbase is storing all of the ETF, uh, all, all the ETFs right now, and that their prediction was that the next uh, FTX instance would happen with Coinbase and directly affect those ETFs. Do you think that is absolute malarkey or do you think there's some kind of uh, notion of uh, that being correct or could be? I don't know if all the ETFs are using them. I, That's I what I said. They, were, they seemed convinced on that. I was like, I don't know. I don't know if all of them. Um, I mean, I know the biggest are uh, with, with you know, IBIT is BlackRock's, and they're definitely doing it. But, like, is I think Fidelity is the second biggest, and they cause have their own custody. So um, I'm not sure if they use Coinbase or not. Uh, if we had a problem at Coinbase, I'll run with your your question, though. Um, yeah, we'd be in a lot of trouble because it's going to be way bigger than FTX. Ah, but it's tough. I don't think we will have an issue with that. I think the the there's probably so much security and multi-sigs and things that are happening, and I feel like the money that's going into these ETFs, at least for now, 
is uh, Hotel California. It's going in, but it ain't coming out. Yeah, A1 says, Boomer, what up from the X feed? Yo, for everybody watching on the X feed, appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. The So I got a game show that I want to get into you here with a second, but I want to do kind of a final notion here regarding uh, Yugen. I don't mean final, but we kind of like briefly talked about it uh, earlier and obviously with Phil. It feels like they are at the forefront in terms of everybody still views them as number one. Obviously, there's been a lot of hiccups and changes throughout it, but I know that you've been heavily involved within that ecosystem and seen everything. So I'm just kind of curious your overview of some of their missteps, some of the things that they've done right, and just kind of your sentiment towards uh them lately yeah i'm frustrated i'm really really frustrated with yuga um i mean i've minted 19 apes i've been around the whole time i mean at one point yuga was the majority of my bag it is not the majority now i mean i still own an ape it is listed but still own it for now um i've participated in every game i've participated in pretty much every event that i could get to um Ape Fest, I, I couldn't. Uh, I mean, their gaming has been atrocious. Uh, anyone that calls heavy metal fun um, needs to be checked up on because that game was the opposite of fun. Um, and I know everyone, I think you even had a, a tweet you pulled up that was someone was tweeting, asking for their bags on what's happening with heavy metal. I think that um, I think that that was a huge misstep. Relaunching Dookie Dash with the creator part is cool. I think relaunching Dookie Dash is not cool. I think other side is in a lot of trouble with the change, whatever occurred with improbable leaving. Um, just from a game side, if your whole back end is gone, you have to rebuild it, and that takes time. It's probably why we haven't seen any uh, live things for a while until the apes come home. Um, and even then, I think that was a step backwards. Even just no audio is kind of strange. Um, so yeah, I think I think the I think you guys got an identity crisis internally. Um, Daniel leaving. Some say it's good. Some say it's bad. Uh, they've pivoted to basically a full gaming company, and they got rid of the gaming exec. So it's kind of kind of strange. Um, so I'm I'm in the camp of this doesn't feel like it did before. A lot of people have left the club, and I don't think, I don't feel like the community is being treated fairly by the team. I think they're trying, but it's not enough. Sp Spicy. All right, listen, now we're ready for the game show here with the first question. The way this is going to work, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask Boomer or basically make a statement. Boomer, you got two minutes, three minutes, whatever you feel is adequate time to break it down. We got about eight different topics here. Let's roll right off the first one. Yuga acquiring Moonbirds. That makes me want to vomit. <laughs> I mean... Not not for the Moonbird's sake and the whole CCO or whatever, but like bailing out Kevin Rose is the way I view that. Whether they did it to add cash to their balance sheet, not do a down round, you know, because they did a st stock swap is apparently the rumor on the on the street. I don't know if they've publicly said this or not. I've never talked to anyone in Yuga, so I'm going off of just what has publicly been kind of brought up. But to me, it feels like a Kevin Rose bailout and. I am not a fan of Kevin Rose. I don't think that he treated his community um, and his collectors, um, you know, with respect and dignity. I, I, I never owned a Moonbird because of Kevin. I don't care what the price was. Um, there's plenty of opportunity to buy and sell and flip those things. Um, I refused out of principle. And to see Yuga, um, you know, give him a golden parachute out. And, um, you know, I guess he's out now. He's been... I saw tweets that he was selling his stuff and burning his ENS and things. So I guess that's a positive, but yeah, not, not excited as a, as a community member seeing, you know, just public data and seeing a, um, seeing Kevin Rose get a golden parachute is annoying and frustrating. Next one. NFTs feel like they've been completely rinsed with a broader crypto market pump. Um, I think you've got a bull market coming. 
or here, I think it's easier to sell in and out of coins. It's an attention economy. And I'm not just talking shit coins. I'm saying just any coin, right? It's it's easy. You don't get called out for selling. I mean, I've, I've made a public thing and said, I'm selling some NFTs. Like, I need to cut back. I can't be in as many discords. And I still have founders and community members messaging me going, why are you selling? You know, to pu publicly tagging me in the Discord or DMing me. Um, and they're, I mean, they're illiquid for the most part, um, especially as, as ordinals and Solana and other things, you know, and other chains are coming. I think NFTs are going to be here forever. And I think there's a lot of provenance on some great NFTs. Uh, and I'm still bullish on what they bring. Um, utility uh, to NFTs is getting quite difficult. I mean, you, as you read about Starbucks, um, if they can't figure out how to bring utility to NFTs with the market size and capital they have, like it's a long road ahead. Um, but people are impatient, especially in this space. They have an attention span of a gnat. And if they can get in and out of something quick, um, then the NFTs just won't be the target for them right now, at least in this part of the cycle. The attention span of a gnat. I think that's a little bug for anybody that doesn't know. The common trend of projects that are already launched or have a following on other chains now launching something on ordinals. Fantastic. I mean, I, I love it because um, it's all about experimenting. The space should be embracing um, change and embracing trying new things. Not everything will work. Uh, I mean, Star Defenders, what we're doing at Jolly Bean, like that is us experimenting with a different way to look at contracts. Um, you know, th tools that we've had for years, we're just going to put them together in a different way and try something on Ornals. I think it's fantastic. There's communities I've been learning about. Um, on Chain Monkey had no idea all the cool stuff Danny was doing. And he sent me a DM. We've sent me info. I've started to read this and I'm going, this is amazing. Like, he figured out so many cool things with ordinals and cursed sats and stuff. I was learning a, a ton. Like I love learning. I think the experimenting is fun and I'm excited to see more communities and people try different things, whether it's ordinals or Solana or a new ecosystem. Blast has got some cool stuff happening. I know people are fudding it, but like I think they're doing cool stuff and more and more communities talking to a developer over there that uh, launched a really cool NFT project and a and a and a bot sniper uh, piece and and a, I mean just super smart people are building in different chains. I I love it. Meme coin mania. Um. So I am like anti meme coin for the most part. Then realizing that I'm an idiot because NFTs are essentially attention economy kind of things and act like illiquid meme coins. Um, so I guess take that the grain of salt. I did buy um, uh, a recent meme coin because I opened Twitter at 1 a.m. and saw our favorite, uh, Mr. Beanie, uh, bragging about how he was right. So naturally I'm going, oh, what is Beanie right about now? See him in, uh, you know, making fun of D's and Farouk. And so talking about a coin. So I decided to buy some of said coin and um, that was probably the first meme coin I bought since Pepe and Mog. Little, little, little amounts of those, but not much. I don't do much meme coins, but this one's got some attention, and it's been really interesting to see how everyone's approaching it. And yeah, I think they're. I mean, memes are here to stay. The trend of many collections making Fortnite experiences. Um, so this one's kind of funny to me. Back in 21, uh, you know, Apes minted, and then all of a sudden, you know, we had all these projects mint, and then they realized that, oh, crap, we need to do something other than just mint um, to entertain our community. What can we do? And that's kind of where the metaverse play really started kicking off. I know that, like, firsthand, because we built lots and lots of experiences for all these NFT companies. and. Now, the metaverse concept is pretty much played out. And a lot of these companies have less capital because we're, again, just starting the bull. And they're trying to figure out what they can do to entertain their community again. And it's really hard to build a, a mobile game. It's really hard to build, uh, you know, AA, AAA games. 
it's really easy to build in Fortnite, like really easy to build in Fortnite. The UEFN, the creator tools are fantastic. I'm a huge fan of Epic. And uh, while I have played Fortnite with you and some of your buddies and I'm terrible, um, I, I appreciate, um, you know, what they've built and all the money and, and resources that they've put towards it. And I think communities are trying to figure out and kind of grasp at straws of like, how the hell do we keep our communities entertained? And is there a way to make some money on, on the side with this? And it's really not expensive and it's really easy to make Fortnite maps. So I think we're going to see more of that. I think we're going to see more of Roblox. Like Roblox requires some coding, um, you know, Lua and stuff. So like, I think it's a barrier to entry there and maybe it's not the perfect market fit because it's generally younger kids playing. But um, I think a Roblox or a Fortnite experience is... Uh, for most of these non-gaming projects, their quote-unquote sandbox uh, experience. They're, they're, and I say that in quotes because it's, it's what everyone was calling the metaverse, which we, we saw how that worked out. So what do you think of the game? All right, all right, do, do it again some other time. More questions? What's a, that's a thought here, Boom. I, that was kind of fun. I, I enjoyed that from my end. <laughs> Yeah, you you just launched grenades, and I just I just you know was dodging landmines. Yeah, it's super fun. This is new new form of video game. This is what the metaverse is about. This so is, this is Schiller's PvP. <laughs> we were talking with Das a little bit earlier, and kind of I gave some of the questions to him. And one of the additional questions that I asked was, you know, we, we have this huge stigma that's still out there of blockchain, NFTs, crypto, all of it being bad. At what point does that change? Like, is there anything that actually makes it where that's not the case or just kind of a slow evolution of, you know, people just accepting for what it is? Um, my answer has changed over the years and it will change probably continuing as I learn more and understand more. Um, you know, originally I kind of you know, came into the space from the finance side, to be honest, and was like, okay, I kind of see this as a store of value talking about Bitcoin specifically. And I didn't really pay attention to anything else. Um, I should have, I would have made probably been retired and made a lot of money if I would have, but like I didn't. So I bought Bitcoin, just left it. Um, and I just kind of said, okay, I, I get it. If it takes off, great. And then as I started to, um, you know, full time in 21, uh, you know, early 21 in the space, um, I realized that um, we need more people here in order for this to be sustainable. And so I thought at the time that getting to mass adoption, you know, and driving, you know, the normies into the space, um, is going to be what's best because more liquidity comes in the better um, and that we can do that as, you know, individuals and companies building cool stuff. And it was very apparent that um, all the work that we'd put in through the bull and the bear of 22 and 23 didn't make any <laughs> a dent compared to what uh, wall street could do with, with institutional capital. And so seeing, um, you know, tens of billions of dollars flow into Bitcoin, which is naturally going to make its way down to alts and meme coins and all of that. Um, from a liquidity standpoint and, you know, bringing in quote unquote mass adoption, um, these funds in just a few months have done insane amounts of volume and have brought a lot of liquidity to the space. But I'm more thinking that, um, you know, obviously we're going to all do our part to talk about it and tell people and participate. Um, you know, some people are going to be instantly turned off to anything that's not Bitcoin, um, especially if they run into some meme coins first uh, with some of the names and things that are out there, um, you know, getting the headlines. But um, it's, I think, a, a path to self-discovery. People are going to have to realize that they want to be here and, we just need to do a better job at making it easy and accessible um, and somehow get rid of people scamming people. I think that's one of our biggest hurdles and it's just tough. Like self custody is hard and it's for some people they'll never do it. And so, you know, we need the coin bases and Krakens and Gemini's of the world. I'm talking about more U S stuff cause that's where I'm at. Um, you know, to help, you know, bring people on and bridge, um, you know, what they were doing pre-crypto to bringing them into the space. 
How come we haven't seen a, a like an onboarder to the same extent the Top Shot was? Was it just the fact that that was kind of a one-time phenomenon? Obviously, they've gone to try to do other different sports categories, but it's not really felt like anything Web3 related has found as much kind of like viral success to actually onboard. I would argue Board Apes was kind of like a... a, a cross effect from what happened with people kind of exiting top shot and looking for other things but how come we haven't really had any big onboarding events or protocols uh so top shot is is an issue so i met you through top shot i followed true you true top shot days, right and uh, i'll be honest i don't know if board apes would have minted out when they minted out if it wasn't for top shot and i say that because almost everyone i followed in top shot minted at least an ape and was changing their pfps on twitter uh at that time and then all of a sudden within days apes were minted and then really kind of took hold and most of the people that were building that community were top shot people like there was a good chunk i don't, I don't know what percentage i, I maybe you don't agree agree but I, I felt like it was a big chunk of people at top shot so no for sure I felt like that early part was um, beneficial to the apes, but why haven't we seen another Top Shot? I think Top Shot was in a right place at the right time. Because uh, you got to go back. Like we were in COVID, we still were not comfortable leaving houses. People were getting airdropped money from the government, uh, you know, without whitelist grinding. Um, and they had disposable income. Crypto was mooning, right? When um, the world kind of shut down in March of 20. Uh, you know, Bitcoin was what, like 3K or something. And by the end of the year, it was 20. So people felt flush with cash. And you then bring in Top Shot, which was great. You could use credit card. You could onboard with an e email. Like no one cared about decentralization because they, they didn't know it existed, right? They brought them in with custodial wallets. And you're trading one of the most popular sports, you know, in the world. And it was like, you know, I mean, it's digital trading cards, right? Like we all grew up trading cards as kids. I don't care what sport it was. Most of them were baseball, but, um, you know, we're trading cardboard. So you kind of mix all these together and be like, wait, I own this. It doesn't degrade. I don't have to figure out how to store it. And, and it's a movie and, you know, it's a moving a video. This is fantastic. So I think it was just a right place at the right time. I don't, I don't, I think we've evolved and we understand kind of more about tech and, and more about self custody and kind of all these things, um, you know, for those active participants. Um, I think it was just the right place at the right time. What do you, what and then do you, they have the kind of their own downfall and destruction. <laughs> well, I was going to say, what do you, what do you remember about those early day top shots? Cause you know, when I was reminiscing with Phil, like stuff started coming back to me about like the stress tests and us having to kill three hours on a stream being like, all right guys, uh, who's getting packs. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah. And then, and then being annoyed when you didn't get a pack, but then the, the like the sheer, like super happy, euphoric biggest dopamine hit ever when like you're the one that won the pack right um put it you know when they put in the queue system i was like oh my gosh this is horrible uh and that felt like it was killing it off um uh, they they could have done so many things differently um to actually just show that they cared about the community and uh that that didn't exist but um i i don't know my best top shot moment was completing the uh the rookie challenge and and pulling a, a, a number one cereal. Um, but it still is mine and hasn't been sold and will probably never sell. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's, it's like going back to old games. Like I, I used to play world of Warcraft, you know, a long time ago and vanilla and burning and whatever. And you, you have all these like great memories of those things. And I'm sure if I went back and played it right now, it would not live up to it. So, I'm not going to, I know Top Shot's been working on it, but I'm not going to go back personally. So to recap, in terms of like a perspective, we had Top Shot come out, a bunch of people made money, and then a lot of people lost a lot of money. Board Apes came out, a lot of people made a lot of money, and depending on when you bought, people now have potentially lost a lot. But still, everybody gives NFTs the connotation that it's all only about making money. Why? 
most of the, and by most, I mean a very large majority of the market participants right now are here only for money. So naturally, um, those that only are here for one thing, um, everyone kind of gets lumped into that. You know, you've got fantastic artists and whether it's by hand or gen art, you've got people who are really thinking outside the box, trying to create things. And if you go look in any of the discords or in their tweet threads as comments or in their spaces, it's always talking about floor price and airdrops. And what are you going to do for me now? So that is just where we're at with the current, um, you know, kind of meta of it all being financial products, um, you know, or, or being heavily incentivized financially because that is the only participants here. And until we get people who are here, um, you know, that come into the space and it's not just about money, um, you know, we're going to still have some of these problems. But I think gaming will shift some of that. Um, of course, there's going to be the the speculators, uh, those that are going to, you know, try to extract as much as they can from those. But we will get people who are genuinely just curious and have fun playing games and think it's cool that they own something and it can't be removed you know, from them, um, you know, or taken from them. It's funny to think about, like, you know, having these conversations and something that I was kind of thinking about last night is, you know, we have a chance to write history in a way. And, you know, looking back at the stream, we could, you know, 10 years from now be like, what a dumbass thing we just said for, you know, whatever reason. But it is the fact that we're early and it's something that's exciting and new. But when you look at the past two years, have you seen anything that you felt has really pushed the space forward in a good way? I mean, the U.S. legal, like, it feels like it's all kind of negative, but have you seen any developments that you personally feel just, you know, much better, safer, or bullish on the space overall? Uh, I mean, from uh, the financial kind of component, and you brought up the U.S., I mean, the fact that we've now got Bitcoin ETFs, um, I, I really, really doubted that we were going to have that for a while, um, just for how anti-crypto and honestly stupid the U.S. is being about things. Um, and that is just going to unlock billions and billions and billions of dollars and that will then spark more innovation more creativity whether it's on bitcoin or eth um you know or, or solana or other networks um yeah I, I i think that that is done a lot of good and we haven't even started to see we're seeing the initial effects of it right now with price um so everyone's euphoric because again they're all here for money um, but within a few years, we're going to really see what that money has done. Things are going to be created. Um, the next board ape is going to happen um, in this cycle. It will not be the board apes. It will be something completely different that we have no idea. Maybe even it exists yet because maybe it hasn't even started being made. Um, but I, I think a lot of the tech uh, and onboarding, um, new features, you know, easy access, safety. Well, you know, all this stuff is getting better. Um, I, you know, I'm, even though it still happens, um, we can joke about how apes don't read. Um, but Wallet Guard, if that was here last bull run, would have saved so many apes' asses. Um, you know, and they didn't need a ton of funding to get that, but but it's critical now to have that piece. So you know exactly what you're signing. Um, I don't use it, but Magic Eden's wallet, where it's cross chain you have all your assets in one spot i mean is a fantastic thing and if i wasn't so used to just using metamask and even though it's inferior um you know and didn't want to switch everything over but i i think that if that was around last bull run um would have been significantly easier to operate on chains and it wouldn't have been such a big deal migrating between chains um there's just a lot of cool tech um you know, Thorchain and what they're doing for liquidity is amazing. Um, the bridges uh, uh, and, and moving funds back and forth is becoming easier. I use the bridge all the time. And I I mean, it settles in like a minute. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Like, uh, I just, I think a lot of this infrastructure is, is going to continue to get built up. And I'm excited to see what this new liquidity is going to bring in terms of products and innovation and we, we just we haven't seen it yet it's too new 
You made a point in there saying that we're going to see another board a yacht club, but it's not, you know, there's a chance that we haven't seen it. Uh, but the, I, I think there's also a chance that we had. So I want to go to your node monkeys. I know that you ended up picking up one, uh, and for ordinals, a lot of people are saying that that is the King collection over there. Can you give us just a broad overview, imagining that nobody <laughs> we've seen node monkeys, but we don't really know how the heck it got the traction that it did. Yeah. Uh, so I'll clarify one thing. Like, we haven't seen another board ape. I wasn't just talking about a PFP. Like, gotcha. I'm talking about what apes have done in the bull run was historic. It was amazing. I mean, just they penetrated culture. They did so many cool things. And we could argue that some of that was paid, uh, you know, by moon pay or whatever. It, it doesn't matter. The fact is that it happened, right? It was being discussed on TV. It was the thing to do. It was a thing to be in. It was just a, a vibe. And, uh, so I wasn't just talking about like the NFT or the ordinal side. Um, Node Monkeys is interesting. I did not catch on early. Um, I was actually kind of pitched by a buddy of mine uh, that I've known for a very long time who is very in touch with a lot of these things. Um, so I'm very fortunate for him to to take the time to explain to me. I think that Node Monkeys are really interesting. I bought two hoodies. I ended up selling one and have a different one, but I, I still have like my hoodie hyena is what they call it um and i am gonna hold on for for a long time i think there's a lot of liquidity on bitcoin um a lot of people have true fu money on bitcoin they've held for a very long time i mean they make some of the eth wells look very poor um for for how much money is actually sitting on that chain and this is one of the earliest or maybe it's the earliest i don't know i think on chain monkeys are claiming that they were first um, I'm not sure how the provenance kind of works on all of that, the but battle of first in the NFT space as a whole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting. Um, but I think, you know, they've got, um, a community that's formed around them and they've got attention. And I think this is what we're going to continue to see is, um, you know, communities forming and attention gathering in certain spots. And that is going to continue to, um, you know, probably bring price appreciation and, um, and then it'll be something cool. Someone will create something fun with their node monkey and, you know, then it'll spark more people to do it and it'll feel like kind of the ape piece again. Right. Um, you know, where everyone's building their own personalities, their own brands, their own things. Lots of people have done it with punks. Lots of people have done it with apes. Um, maybe see a little bit of the pudgy penguin kind of building, but not much yet. Um, you know, and node monkeys might be the thing. It's it's uh, you know, ordinals is is hot now and they've got a lot of attention over there. I don't I don't what I when I go back, I'll I'll say one more thing is like I don't think that that is the next board ape catalyst that takes over truly like the outside world. Maybe in our bubble, but not the outside world. And I, I don't I don't know what will take that over. Um Maybe ask uh, Jeremy what he's on if it's parallel. <laughs> For sure. Well, I mean, I think that it's interesting that we have Starbucks that's pulling out of the space, not trying to figure out a ways to correct it. Obviously, there's been rumors of Disney connected with like literally everybody and all these, you know, big brands kind of coming into the space. But it feels like it's not really happened yet. But at the same time, you can argue like, OK, there's not really any rails for them to come in on. So the point of me saying that is like, how do you think this metaverse is going to pan out? Do we actually care that much about what we're going to look in these worlds? Are we even close to that coming to fruition? I don't think we're close to that coming. And I, I don't think people, yeah, they care uh, what they look like, but I mean, we're still very far years and years away. I think from something like that existing um, in a way that we're kind of envisioning when you say metaverse, um, I think Epic is probably the closest version of, of what, uh, you know, and what they're probably going to be building is, is probably the closest version of what that might look like in the short term. Um, you can argue that, you know, Fortnite with UEFN might be a quasi metaverse. Um, I mean, they got tons of money from Sony and all sorts of people. So, um, you know, they're very, very well capitalized. No one in Web3 can compete with the size of, of that for now. Uh, I think we all kind of hoped it would grow from sandbox to other side and and uh, other things. I don't, um, I don't think that that's going to be anything in the short term. 
so yeah, I think we've got a ways to go and I think it's going to be smaller activations. Um, stuff in probable is doing is actually really interesting where they've, they've put up, um, I don't know if you've played those couple pop-up games where they'll come on for two, three, four hours and then shut it down. Um, you know, I think we're going to see more of that type of stuff where it's not persistent open world. Um, cause it's really hard to hold people's attention. I, I mean, I look at the, what do they call the Apple VR things? Vision Pro. Those things. Yeah. I mean, how many people were, I mean, even on my timeline, people were going nuts. They loved it. They were showing all sorts of cool stuff. I think I've now seen like one tweet in a week about someone talking about the cool thing that they did. Most of that's just collecting dust. Those things were four grand and the tech was amazing. I mean, I watched videos and I wanted one. I didn't buy one, but I was like, damn, that looks fun. And I realized like to that for that to keep my attention is going to be impossible. It'll be a digital, uh, you know, or it'll be a physical paperweight for something and it'll cost four grand to do that. Like, Attention is really tough, and I think open, persistent worlds are going to struggle to keep people entertained right now until it's something truly remarkable. It's a good point. I mean, I, I do think that we need something that's a big wow factor, and it's weird that the only the only drive for doing anything within Web3 right now feels like it, it's for money, or at least that's the perpetrated thing when it's a lot more, as we obviously see with community getting together, et cetera, et cetera. Max Design, what's up? Thanks for uh, popping by, sir. Hope you are well. So, Boomer, before we wrap up here, I want to go back to Jolly Bean Games because we ended up just picking your brain a hell of a lot. So if you guys oh, are here, oh, obviously, oh, Boomer's handle has been up the entire stream if you want to go follow him you can do that or check out the tweet uh in the uh promo video that i made yesterday uh but jolly bean games we got some we got some leaks about an ordinal style mint for this uh but you got some more going with it so let's do a quick little recap yeah are you, did you play the game on stream i wasn't watching uh, it. i can bring it back up give me a second yeah. no you don't have to i just I, I just didn't know if you did or not um i mean it really isn't about the game for this one um it's i think gonna be really fun and, and entertaining to see. Um, so I'll kind of talk a little bit about it. Um, you know, user will, the player will come lo log in um, with their kind of ordinal wallet. They'll play. Um, they'll hit a certain score that we have not, um, we haven't set yet. We've been testing still. Uh, and once that does, it'll uh, an inscribe button will pop up and they'll be able to inscribe an ordinal. Um, and we all have 793 ordinals. Um, so it will be somewhat of a limited supply um, in that. Um, but what's really happening kind of behind the scenes is we are going to use an ETH smart contract to generate all the art with no real human interaction, all created by code. Um, it seems got it. We're, we're going to have a bunch more info kind of coming out about what we're doing, how we're doing it. Um, but, you know, when you, uh, click inscribe. It's going to randomly pick one of those generated arts and it's going to uh, inscribe it on a sat and deposit it in your wallet. And just that whole concept inside of a game um, and using the game and the score, um, you know, to kind of throttle this. It's the idea like the wait, there's no wait list, right? Like people are like, oh, give me a wait, you know, a wait list for this. Like there's no wait list. Like it's come in and play and have fun. Um, and I've, I don't know about you, but I've seen tons of game companies that are, uh, all trying to make partnerships and they've got that alpha bot or, you know, pre -min or whatever it is. It's, you know, Hey, you know, we've got five spots allocated to this. And it's like, for fuck's sake, you're a game company. This is not fun. Like clicking a thing and hoping I win something like that is not entertaining. It's not fun. Um, so our version of this is come actually play a game. And I want to test my, you know, my hypothesis, right? Do people want the easiest way to do something, which is click a button and hope they win something? Or would they rather come play a game, whatever the game may be, whether it's, uh, you know, an arcade, you know, 80s style game or, uh, you know, a bingo or tic-tac-toe, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, would they want any sort of gamification um, in order to, to do something? And my gut tells me that, um, some of these basic games would be really fun to engage communities and allow them to, um, you know, play 
to earn that spot. It's it's play for access, right? It doesn't matter what the access is. It could be access to ApeFest. It could be access to a mint. It could be access to whatever. Um, and so our test here was, um, you know, testing contracts and, you know, minting something fun and I should say inscribing something fun with ordinals. Um, and it's also to test the theory. So that's what this first little thing is. And it's going to be out in a couple of weeks. And the best way to follow that is just at Jolly Bean Games or anything else. Yep. At Jolly Bean Games and the, the team's going to start kind of tweeting out what we're building, what we're doing, how we're building it. Um, and just seeing if there's interest in people wanting to play and, and engage with it. Amazing. So is there any final things that you'd like to end on a note here, whether it be about the market, what you're doing, uh, our great friendship or uh, any final words, sir? Our great friendship. I love you, man. <laughs> I, I will tell, I will tell you this. I give you a lot of shit all the time, but I absolutely love you. You're a good dude. And um, you've highly entertained me throughout the entire bear market. So I, and I'm pretty sure I can speak for anyone who follows you. Um, you, you are awesome and you make us all smile. So thank you for being you. Thanks for having me on. Um, it's, it's always fun to hang out. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, we'll have you back soon. I'll, I'll make some, some more game questions up too. It'll be fun, but appreciate you taking the time. We'll chat soon, brother. Cheers.